So I took to r slash game collecting to ask a simple question. What are your game collecting hot takes and boy did it get heated. Well, I'd say the conversation was generally civil. Some people are at each other's throats. So I thought it'd be a great idea to throw myself in the middle of the people in an all out no holds bars comment section war. Let's get started with the tame one to test the waters before we get into a really spicy one. You don't have to beat slash extensively play every game you own. What justifies a new addition to your collection varies person to person. Yeah, I mean, I think this is totally correct. You guys know my philosophy on this, and this goes alongside what another user said, saying, a game is over when you stop having fun. Life's too short to finish all the games you start. Yeah, everybody collects differently and for different reasons. Do what's right for you and makes you happy. For me, it's getting CIB games and playing through them at least once, or at least adding them to the list of games to play at least once. I have, uh, I have quite the backlog. <laughs> And how about the other end of the collector acceptability spectrum? One user said, I think graded games are a little silly and this is a hot f topic. I see people debate this daily, so I'll give my two cents on the issue. Personally, I don't care. Like I said previously, everybody collects differently. If you want to lock away your game in an acrylic case, you have the right to do so. Do I think it's a bit silly? Yeah, sort of, but by no means am I gonna tell people who enjoy graded games they're wrong. As some of you know, I'm an avid trading card game player, mainly magic in the new Star Wars Unlimited game, and it doesn't bother me if someone gets their card graded. Well, personally, I really only buy cards to play with. Some other people just enjoy the game and collectible space differently. Do what suits you, tying into what one user said, video game collecting is a poor man's hobby compared to trading cards. This one hurts. Being part of both hobbies, I can say it's pretty true, though neither is particularly cheap, unless you're intentional about it. As one commenter said, some of the best games are not that expensive. Yeah, absolutely. You can build out a really phenomenal game collection for incredibly cheap. There are so many games that don't cost 500 bucks just to play on the original hardware. Where I used to live in Nashville, there was a store that did buy two, get one free for games under 15 bucks, which is how I acquired so many of my Xbox 360 games. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg to play games, which is a point this next commenter made too. Game collecting is an affordable hobby for the most part. People just hyper fixate on the expensive stuff and then act like they can't buy thousands of other games for far less. This user is exactly right, especially in the YouTube game collectors sphere. There's really a hyper fixation on the expensive games. You get so many internet points for having a CIB Chrono Trigger, a sealed Pokemon Emerald, etc. Not to sound like a broken record, but game collecting means something different to everyone. You don't have to have the CIB Chrono Trigger. Maybe you want to emulate that and spend the equivalent cash on dozens of other cheaper games. At the end of the day, don't get caught up in following the trends just for the sake of it and don't get caught up in the clout chasing. That being said, if you are a Chrono Trigger hyper fan and want a CIB, there's nothing wrong with that. Go for it. It's just not what everybody wants or needs. Another user in the thread stated it quite well. Just collect what you're actually interested in. Don't fall into the trap hype of, I need to collect these games because every other collector is getting it right now. It's just a game of bragging rights. At that point, you don't need to put yourself in debt trying to chase the latest trends. And on the same note, one user did say this, and I wanted to address this one. Earthbound is a good game, but not worth the current asking price. This is something I agree with, but I want to talk about for a second. I recently played through Earthbound, and I thought it was a phenomenal game. I did not play through it on the original hardware as I tend to prefer because of the price tag. I actually played it on the Switch's retro catalog and I wanted to make note of this for anybody who doesn't know it exists. There's an awesome way to play a ton of fantastic games. This is also how I'm playing through Fire and Ice for the NES, another rather expensive game. Fire and Ice is a game that I actually considered ordering a reproduction version to play on my NES. One user had a take on reproduction carts saying, repo carts are valid, especially when you can't get the original. I'm gonna say yes and no to this. The reason I personally didn't order a repro cart is because it didn't feel right buying a repro of a game for a system that exists. What I mean by this is Fire and Ice is made for the NES and released in English, and I can get that version, I just need to pay a pretty penny. Now when repros are totally valid is when it's a game that's been translated, maybe like Mother ported and translated for the NES, since there's no official option to enjoy the game on the original hardware in English. Another option is of course emulation, which was a hot topic on the thread. Here's what one user said, emulation is better for most people. I agree, yeah. You guys know that while I don't frequently emulate games, I think it's a great way to experience games
games you otherwise couldn't. I get a lot of comments on each video saying emulating is a good way to play games, and everyone that comments that is right. However, the people who enjoy physical media, such as myself, are just as right. It all comes down to personal preference, sticking in the realm of repros, here's something interesting. Loose carts are better than games with fake cases. So I think I need to define this one a bit. There are some really, really cool videos going around of people making cassette cases with printout covers to make some dope, really cool looking ways to display Game Boy games. I think stuff like that is dope. It's creative, it's different. What I don't like and what I think this post is talking about is straight up fake boxes made to look like the real thing and maybe even fool someone who doesn't know better. Okay, here's a really controversial one. Every single game collector is a reseller. If you sell your games to someone else, even GameStop, you're reselling your games for money or trade in credit. I wholeheartedly disagree with this. I understand the argument, but I would, and many in the hobby would define a reseller as someone intentionally buying and selling games to make a profit. Just because you sell a game you played 10 times and are sick of to help fund a game that you want to play till you get sick of again, I would not consider you a reseller. All right, let's rapid fire some now. Nobody cares about your Pokemon collection. I'm gonna plead the fifth on this one. Uh, this one might be too spicy. Everyone on this page has only played 50% or less of their collection, including me. Not really a hot take. I think we all know it's painfully true. Collecting for the Switch looks horrible on a shelf. Yes, my, my wife says the Switch games need to go in the cabinet under our TV because they're just bright red and kind of look horrid. Owning multiple copies of the same edition of one game is hoarding, not collecting. I'm with you on this one, assuming the person is obviously not a reseller or something. Buying a game should be an experience that is more than just a disc in a case. It should come with swag, manuals, maps, collectible scratch and sniff cards, trading cards, magazine, toys, etc. A hundred percent. I loved when games had dope collector's edition, but with the death of physical media, these sorts of things have really started to die. All right, one last interesting one. Digital collectors are video game collectors too. I'm gonna go with sure on this one. Technically, you have a library of games at your disposal, but in what most people define as game collecting, I wouldn't quite equate it with having physical games. Uh, nothing against anybody who strictly has a digital collection, but uh, I'm curious what you guys think in the comments, not only on this question, but every single one of them. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. If you made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you for sticking around and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe because I have a few more fun videos planned and I don't want you to miss them. I will see you later.